So, Christmas time, um, something that I'm noticing on the Gold Coast at the moment, and, and I work between the Gold Coast and Brisbane, is that particularly on the Gold Coast, a lot of businesses are noticing that sales are actually a bit of a problem. I don't, know if, I don't know if anybody else is experiencing that right now, but sales are actually on the downturn. That is a big problem. Right, I had a uh, meeting last week with the CEO of a major radio station on the Gold Coast, and he was telling me that he can't get businesses to commit to a $150 advertising package per week. This business can't, can't afford it. That's a big problem, huge problem. Right, $150 is not a lot of money in the scheme of things. And he was saying it was quite shocking, and what he'd mentioned is that he felt that um, with the interest rates as low as they are, people are taking advantage of putting any disposable income that they have onto their mortgages and their credit cards and so forth, as opposed to actually into retail spending. So that, that actually is a, a massive problem for us. Now, that's just an opinion, but um, just in talking to a number of people out there, the incidence of sales inquiries are actually pretty low. So that when you get a sales inquiry, it's actually really important that you know how to convert. But right? you've got to be able to convert your sales, guys. All right? Because when the, when the market starts to dry up, you don't have the luxury of, well, if I don't win this piece of business, it doesn't matter, I'm going to have another one next week. All right? Because the chances are you're not going to get another one. <laughs> So every piece of new business that comes through your door, you've got to be able to have a strategy that enables you to be able to try and convert that piece of business, all right? So the internet is an amazing place if you spend the time and you know in the right areas to look to get the content and the information. All right, uh, thanks Ellen. So what I wanted to share with you guys today, uh, these 13 strategies, and I thought they were pretty interesting. <coughs> Over here, talk about Benefits come first, and, and you might recall back when I spoke a couple of weeks or maybe even a couple of months ago, I talked about a bit of a process, all right, when somebody comes across your door looking for sales, all right? The number one thing that you need to do is build rapport. It's the most important thing, all right? You've got to build uh, rapport. Because ultimately, the whole the old way of sales is that people buy from people. Right, if you can't form a relationship with the person that you're intending on buying a product or service from, you're not going to get a sale. It's just as simple as that. Okay. So let's assume that you've got through that point of you've built some rapport right, and you've explored needs. So that was number two of that little process I talked to you about, right? Build rapport, explore needs. Most important. Often in a sales situation, you'll get to meet somebody and you, we've all been in a situation. Hi, I'm Brett, what do you do? Well, I sell this and I do this and I do that and I do this and I do that and I do that. It's all about I, 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 all right? By the end of it, I'm sick of it. I can't even, I don't even know what you do, but quite frankly, I just want to get the hell away from you. Just drive me <laughs> up All right, yeah, there's no way I'm gonna reach my pocket and pay, all right? Because you just badgered me and badgered me and badgered me. You're not taking the time to understand me and my challenges, all right? And whether or not there's a connection. <clears throat> so in this space here, right, in this first sentence here, some sales pitches get carried away quickly with a number of products, features, packages, and options. Always take a step back and think about the main benefits your prospect will gain by making a sale. This is this exploring needs component, all right? So in Glenno's case, let's talk about hosting right now. There's a myriad of different issues out there that a lot of businesses um, are experiencing in hosting, for example. All right, um, but if Glenn had somebody knock on his door, all right, and said, oh, listen, I'm interested about your product. The first thing you wouldn't do is say, well, I've got three packages and they start here, all right, because we're expecting, we're expecting sell, all right. What we want is we want people to buy, all right, so there's a real difference there, all right. They've reached out to you, so it's called dominant buyer behavior, all right. And everybody will have experienced this. You walk into a retail shop, you pick up something, and what happens? Can I help you? Exactly, all right? Picking up that T-shirt, that pair of pants, that blouse, that skirt is a trigger. And it basically is demonstrating dominant buyer behavior, okay? Salespeople have caught this, all right? The next time you go into shop, just think about that, right? If you see something, just look at it, right, without picking it up. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, they're just like, Phew, they're onto you. You haven't made that decision yet. Just think about it. So in terms of um, 
thinking about the main benefits your prospect will gain by making the sale, <clears throat> what challenges are you typically facing in your business? Right, then look, some rings up says, oh, geez, I'm really, I'm really painful. Okay. You are. You are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey? You are. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, you want to try to get to the bottom of the actual challenge, you're up, or then you, you jump into your benefits. Okie dokie. They buy convenience, all right? People buy convenience. They buy an outcome. They buy a solution to a problem, okay? Super important that you um, that you remember that. In Rob's space, all right, why do people buy name badges? Why do people buy name badges, right? You can get to the core essence of that, all right? The solution is really simple, all right? Everybody knows that people like to be uh, referred to by their name, all right? Everybody knows that. So the outcome is not necessarily the badge with the name on it, okay? It's the emotional connection that's been created by offering a device that enables a direct connection. That's the sales pitch, yeah? Okay. Um, turning point is the pitch often for the fact that the product or service provides them more benefits than they have now. Alright guys, so think long and hard about the benefits that your product or service offers your customer <clears throat> before you start diving into, into specifics. Okay, number two, research and understand your prospects. <clears throat> okay, this is a big one. All right. Not a lot of people really understand a lot about their customers. Right? They just hope, and hope is not a sales strategy. Okay? Now, as a classic example, Jim knows exactly who his customers are. He tells us when we see him, most often than not. Right? Jim knows exactly who he wants to target. He knows the age group, the demographics, where they live, and what's important to them. Okay, wills and estates. Is that right, Jim? Business. Business. Strategy is directly connected to the first one. You should not only be able to explain what you're selling, but to understand the customer. Okay, so before the customer comes in the door, what's the problem? What's the problem? You know, that they are typically there to, to ask us for, all right? Dan's situation, <clears throat> most people will contact Dan because they've got an, an urgent need. They can't get onto the internet phone doesn't work, my emails are not working. So the insight there is connectivity. That's the challenge and Dan knows that, right? So there's, there isn't, he isn't having to spend too much time delving into the challenge of the customers because that's clearly how he's positioned himself, right? So in terms of your business, in terms of your sales, right? You need to make sure that you absolutely understand the desire and the need of the customer because it's going to be making it a lot easier for your sales process. <clears throat> it's important to do this type of question, this Q&A, right, in some quiet times, right? The main business goals you prospect, you're familiar with their business activities, what are the main um, obstacles in that industry, what are the areas they should improve, are they working with your competitor in yes? And this happens in terms of both an inbound and an outbound sales situation, okay? So I might have talked about inbound and outbound in the past, right? Inbound sales are a reaction to a marketing function. So you have come to a networking group, you run digital advertising, you put your, uh, put your Facebook posts up, you're writing blogs, you're pushing out news articles, that's what we call out, um, inbound activity, all right? People are responding to the things that you're putting out into the market, thank you dokes. Outbound is when you target somebody that's desirable. Desirable, all right? It's what we call a complex sale. And a complex sale basically means there are several decision makers in the process of getting to the end result. Does that make sense? All right. So, in terms of, let's talk about Lindell. All right. So, Lindell might decide that she's going to put a whole bunch of social media posts out there, maybe do a little bit of database marketing and so forth. Okay. 
what that does is that reaches out to her community and people that are aware of her brand. Those people then pick up the phone and say, hey, Linda, can you come help me out, please? All right, that's an inbound inquiry. An outbound inquiry might be, I might reach out to a school, right? I might reach out to a school. Because the school, there's a decision maker in that school that can connect her to a myriad of different people right, that may benefit from Lindell's services, okay? However, there's probably several people and processes and obstacles that you've got to get through before you actually secure that piece of business, all right? So that's the difference between inbound sales and outbound sales, okay, dogs? <clears throat> so make sure, guys, it's really important that you look within your database and you look within your customer uh, profiles and portfolios to try and understand a little bit more about who they are, okay? Um, a great thing to Google is buyer persona. Buyer persona, all right? Look it up, understand what it means, all right? A buyer persona is a fictional character of exactly the type of person that you want to service, all right? When your telephone rings, if you've created your buyer persona in the background of your business, you can almost be certain that, that that's that person ringing you, all right? But you've gotten to know that person, that fictional character, we have taken the time to understand their gender, their psychographics, uh, the geographics, the demographics, all that sort of whatnot, okay? So it's almost like you're building, building a relationship with somebody you've never met before, right? But the reason why it's so important is because when you go back to sales process, the number one thing is build rapport. So you can't build rapport with somebody you don't know, right? So get to know the person you don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah? All right, cool. So research and understand your prospects. <clears throat> Okay, target small markets. It's a pretty interesting one. Who's been guilty of, I'm just gonna, my customer's everybody. Who's heard that one before? My customer is everybody, okay? I can it's tell you right now, fine. it's not. It's not. It's not. It's a very expensive way to look at business. Right, right. Everybody is not your customer. You will have a much greater opportunity if you decide the industry that you want to tackle, but then you sub-segment that industry into silos. <coughs> it just into silos. Because the more you narrow down your market, <clears throat> all right, and that could literally be by age or gender, all right? It could be by geolocation, it could be Brisbane, it could be Sydney, Melbourne, all right? It could be by traits, purchase traits, the further down you delve, all right, to find out who your exact customer is. Okay, let's talk about Mon for a second, okay? So, Mon, you've got a number of different hats you wear, right? So, let's just talk about PA for Hire, right, that brand, okay? So the key is, your market is not everybody, all right? Because there are businesses out there that have got EAs and secretaries and, and so forth, right? executive support <clears throat> but your business your typical business might be not a startup because they don't have cash flow right but they might be at somebody who's got a, maybe a million dollar turnover right they're starting to get a little bit of growth all right so you can then do your research to try and understand how many businesses out there or you can join groups all right that actually target those types of consumers that you could then become a participant in yeah and then that way you're narrowing down exactly who it is that you want to talk to, yeah? Eli, <clears throat> in electrical. Sure, Eli could do electrical work for pretty much everybody. He could, no problem, okay? But the scale of profitability from here to here is immense, right? Your tiny little home profitability is probably here, right? Your big end of town is probably here. The reality of it is, is that everybody's chasing the big shiny dollars over here. So then suddenly it shifts, the power shifts from the supplier where he can charge his fees at a good profitable rate. All right, it shifts to a buyer. Because the buyer knows there are so many people, so many sparkies who actually want that piece of business, they can drive the economy of scale down, right? Which is then not profitable for Eli. Does that make sense? So he doesn't make much profit up the high end. He doesn't really make much profit at the low end, all right? Because they don't have the money. Right, so it's really, really important that by targeting the right market, all right, that people aren't operating in. In his space, his profitability margins will be higher, his 
pipeline and volume of work that'll be coming through will be consistent, all right? Great business, excellent business, okay? So the key take out with this point three, guys, is target a small market. <clears throat> all right, start with specific goals, all right? Really important to set your goals. Who sets goals at the beginning of the year? Finish, you guys. Set goals. Set goals. Super important. Alright? We set financial goals. Everybody should set financial goals. Alright? But the thing is, is we call it a BHAG. Does anybody know what a BHAG means? Big, hairy, audacious Big, goal. Big, hairy, <laughs> audacious goal. Exactly right. Set a BHAG. <clears throat> Why? It motivates you to get up in the morning. Alright? Sometimes when you look at the BHAG, I'm going to do $2 million in sales this year. Oof, that's quite a lot of money. How the hell am I going to achieve that? Break it down into bite-sized chunks. Bite-sized chunks. All right, let's just call it $1.2 million. $100,000 a month. How do I do $100,000 a month? Oof, okay, 25 grand a week. How do I do 25 grand a week? I do that by seven. Okay, and I look to, to, to set up your goals. And this is in the space of sales, it's really, really important that you put a dollar figure on on your sales results. Super important, all right? Because often people will go to work, go, oh, well, I don't really know what my cost of goods are. Kind of somewhere in here. Don't really know what my expenses are, but I'm gonna hope that we get sales, right? It's a shocker. And that's why so many small businesses fail before five years. It's a common statistic. Is because there's a lot of entrepreneurial spirit out in the market, all right? But the simple things like setting goals for your business is something that is so foundational that people don't do, all right? It's critically important, guys. All right, have to have a time frame, all right, that you can work towards. Okay, connecting with the right people. So, I talk a lot about the early 70s. You know, 70s was like it was the big sales revival. Everybody was out there, you can see this corny shows, you know, with the short sleeve business shirts and the long and the, and the ties and all that sort of stuff. Okay, it was a, there was a big sales time then, right, before popping on to it. But there was things that were learned back then, all right? These days, comparative to where it was, there was only really one decision maker back in the day, and that was the owner. That was the owner, all right? Well, in, talk to the owner. Owners were more accessible. You know, they were willing to talk to us. In this day and age, we're getting smashed left, right, and centre by people putting stuff up. They want to sell shit left, right, and centre. All right, and that's a real problem. So we're getting so many sales messages whilst we're trying to do our own thing. All right, what's happening now is the decision of the sale is right being split out across organisations. Okay, so what happens now is we talk about different degrees of actual decision maker. Right? We have an initiator who recognizes the need to buy. Right? The influence is the person who influences other people. I really think we need to do this. Right? I'm not paying for it, but I really think we need to be doing this. Okay? The decider, the person who ultimately makes the decision to approve. <clears throat> Sometimes that's not the MD anymore. Sometimes that person's actually been delegated the task of making the decision to purchase. So if we're talking to the managing director of a business, all right, or of a household to make a decision, all right, they might find that that actual task has been given to somebody else. You're wasting your time, all right, and time is money, guys. The buyer who handles the purchase, the user who actually uses the product, who actually then becomes the influencer, and then the gatekeeper. So in terms of sales, it's really, really complex out there. Right, in terms of actually working out who it is that you need to be speaking to to be able to get the decision or the outcome that you're looking for. Okay, embrace storytelling. Kind of goes back to a little bit what I was talking about before. Hi, I'm John. This is what I do. I sell, I sell, I sell, I sell, I sell, I sell, I sell. All right? We've all had that experience, all right? Great salespeople are storytellers. <clears throat> they storytellers. Why do they storytell? And, I, and, I, and I, I'll highlight Jim here because Jim, when you take time 
to listen to Jim. Jim has got a wealth of engaging content, right? That not necessarily is relative to legal, okay? But it's attractive. You want to listen, you know? And the opportunity is once you storytell and you engage your opportunity or you engage your prospect, all right? You will find a trigger to be able to impart your message, all right? It is a fantastic way to start that sales process. Okay. It comes back to this point here of customer engagement, all right? Capturing the attention, all right? By doing your research, you might find, like for example, in the Living Made Easy space, right? Before you actually go out and pitch Living Living Made Easy, you want to learn a little bit more about what they're doing, right? Oh, I saw that post the other day, or I saw that, that those Carol Awards that he's doing. Thing, yeah, that guy. I know that I'm going to try and sell you. I'm just waiting for my opportunity. You know what I mean? And the more that I can get into your headspace, the more I understand about you. All right. And I'll give you a great example. This happened to me. Right. <clears throat> I used to have a blue cruise, and it had done. I'd done exactly what I wanted it to do. It was to cruise. Right. But I drove it into the ground. I drove it into the ground. So I went and saw. Uh, went and saw uh, a new car sales guy. So I got into his head. I got into his head. I said, hey, mate, how's the market? Oh, geez. It's pretty tough at the moment. I said, is it? It's terrible. How are you going with that? Oh, I was just doing everything I can. You, he's telling me, and I'm there to buy the car. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I said, how long have you been here for? He goes, oh, three months. Coming up to my probation. He's telling me this. He's <laughs> telling me this. All right? Mm -hmm. The end result is, that car came to me at $7,000 from the floor price. <laughs> Seven grand. Thanks very much, mate. Right? Because I got in your head. Right? And I understood your situation. <clears throat> All right? So understand people's situation. I know we've got a couple of minutes, so I'll just slide through this quickly. Okay. Don't ignore feedback. All right? Super important. Do a good job. Do a bad job. Continually do customer satisfaction surveys. Super, super important, right? Once you've delivered on a piece of work, ring them. Don't email them, ring them. How was it? Oh, geez, that first part was amazing. This was a little bit more expensive than I expected. Okay, great, great, great. Make those notes, right? Gather all the data, find the insights, right? But don't ignore your feedback guys. <clears throat> Couple more to go. Pick up the phone, pretty obvious, all right? These days, we hide behind our computers. So we hide behind the screens, all right? And the um, customer relations, human behavior, human interaction is being lost. It's being lost really, really quickly, all right? If you've got an opportunity you want to pursue, pick them up, ring them. Bill did it, he was telling me this on Monday. Right? Bill, he needed an engineer, right? <laughs> he told me how he did it. Picked up the phone, all right? Researched the business, he rang up and he said, is John there? Right? He didn't say it's John Smith there, the managing director. He just said, G'day, it's Bill, it's John there. So the lady on the phone went, yeah, sure, no problems. Right? Right? John's the CEO. Right? Just put him straight through. Right? John picks up the phone, he goes, hello, John speaking. Bill says, yeah, hey, John, it's Bill. He goes, hello. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But he got him. He got him. Right? It's so simple. All right? So really, pick up the phone, guys, and there's a myriad of information on the internet of um, in terms of phone etiquette follow up regularly right no today is not no tomorrow that's a massive thing in sales all right no today is not no tomorrow all right who knows what's happened today right the bushfires are coming close who knows right ring up form the rapport they say no I'm not really interested today no problems at all we'll be back next week Where's that line where you just become annoying? Five. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, now, I, I was talking to a chap uh, this week. He is from Venezuela. He can speak English. He's been in the country for three years. He's learned English. He now has a job. He went to Jamie Oliver's restaurant. I needed a job. He had a wife and a kid. He arrives in Brisbane. He's got nothing. All right. He's been kidnapped. Blah, blah, blah. Sites comes to Australia. He goes to Jamie Oliver's. Right. He knocks on the door and he says, I'd like a job. The guy says, no, don't speak English, no. He comes back, he says, I'll see you next Thursday. He comes back next Thursday. Seven weeks this went on for, mm -hmm. to the point where the, where the floor manager said, mate, you're driving me nuts, I'm gonna call the cops. 
Okay. It was at that point that the general manager came down and said, what's going on here? He said, this guy's been here seven times looking for a job. And he goes, that's the type of guy I want in my business. <laughs> Gave him the job, all right? Be persistent, guys, all right? But I suppose, Lyndall, the key is, would be ringing them every day, do you know what I mean? Ring them once every couple of weeks, do you know what I mean? But make a note, what was the last point of conversation? Here's product demos and free trials. When I wrote this, I thought of Lyndall again, right? Now, I, I, would, I would lump this all into the marketing bucket, quite frankly, all right? But I think um, awareness about what you do, right, is very important. But you want to be able to demonstrate that. Do, do, do you know what I mean? And I thought to myself, and this really applies to anybody, but just in terms of this example, I thought, what an awesome opportunity it would be to try and find like a little center somewhere where you could actually have some pop-up banners around it and actually invite people to jump on the table for 10 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Not uh, it's an idea. Right? <laughs> it's an idea. It's not. But, but, but in, the, in the spirit of that idea and right across the board, okay, the key is, is, to, is to be outward in terms of your offering. Get, you know, share knowledge. Speak, speak what you know, okay? Demonstrate, demonstrate your confidence. Right, and Dan's space is a classic example with some of the stuff that Dan does, right? Just show you, show you how to do it. Because something that happens is you're positioning yourself as an authority in that field, suddenly this is the guy I want to talk to. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't forget your existing customers. Right? That's a big problem, guys, and you will have heard the theory behind this before, which is it's harder to find new business than to retain existing. Right? For some reason, what happens is in business, we win a piece of business, we thank you so much, we've done a great job for you, out the back, let's go and see somebody new and exciting, all right? Super expensive, hard to find, time consuming, etc., etc. all right? These guys here, your customers, are the people that can really do a great job for you. Why? They're your unpaid salespeople, all right? Unpaid salespeople, you leverage them, okay? Find out the good things that you can do. Get that referral, all right? Work with them, all right? They're also a great source of new business for you as well, too. Okay. <clears throat> Mind the sales process, okay? Now, we're all customers. We all buy stuff, right? And there's a certain way that we want to be treated when we buy, okay? <coughs> it doesn't change when we're now selling. Does that make sense? It doesn't change when we make when we're selling, right? We are buyers, they are buyers. When we talk to them, we talk to them as if we are them. Yep, so we're minding our sales process. Suddenly, because we've got a product or service to sell, doesn't mean we want to jam it down their throat. Okay, we need to be thinking about how we would be receptive to that sales message and how would we necessarily respond. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, this is a really, really big one. Email automation, right, once we've got our database in, in place, right, if we manage our current clients well, right, and we position ourselves as an authority in our field, right, customers these days in the digital world are accustomed to receiving information that they have acknowledged and given us permission to receive. All right? That's basically somebody saying, yes, you can talk to me. <clears throat> Those customers that say, yes, you can talk to me, want high value content, guys. They don't want rubbish, all right? There was a time on socials where everybody was posting about what they were eating. Who cares, all right? If you're an, a noted expert in your field, all right, deliver content, that positions you as an expert in your field, all right? And email automation is a way to do that. It is a bit time consuming, all right, by preparing the content, all right? But if your market is saying, guys, yes, I'm prepared to receive information from you, take advantage of it. It is so important. It is literally somebody waving their flag in front of you. <clears throat> okay, guys, so there's, um, <coughs> There's 12 of them. The 13th is questions. All right. I know we've got only a few seconds left. <laughs> <laughs>
So is there any questions around sales? Is there like, is there anybody having a challenge in sales right now? All right? Not that necessarily I might be able to answer, but we can draw upon them. Right? Who's, who, has anybody got a sales challenge right now? Anybody? All right? Could be something from Zelo. Um, what was it? Um, 2011, don't forget existing customers is a big challenge for me. So I'll go on a big sales drive and then <coughs> click and think, oh crap, I've got 200 customers that are my regulars that I haven't talked to in a couple of weeks. I know, that's so Yeah. I think yeah, that's a great example, absolutely. That's a, that's a great example. And I think the thing is, is that's a, that's a lovely brand activation. It's a beautiful brand activation. And it's got a lot of personality behind it as well too. And what I would also be doing there is I would be demonstrating uh, some more value to them. Right? Use this opportunity. Now we talk about content themes in marketing, right? And they really fall under four categories. So when you're outwardly communicating to your audience, use four themes, right? Those four themes are branding, a brand-based message, right? The second one is an educational message, right? Third one is a promotional message. And the fourth one is thought leadership, right? Often when it comes time to speak to our customers, we're not entirely sure what do we say. <coughs> And that's when we start pumping out sort of bespoke content and the things that we like, they might not like, right? Whereas when you're talking to your database, right, utilize your database as an opportunity from a branding point of view, which is building rapport, right? Present something educational. Right? Give them, did you realize that if you did this, this, and this, it's going to help your home? You may not necessarily get a sale out of that, but that's not really the point, right? The point of the touch is to Raise your brand flag, give them some advice, with the key insight being that you're an authority <coughs> in the field. You know what I mean? And that, and that is ultimately what we're trying to do with our customer base. Branding, Branding. Yeah. educational, yeah. promotional, yeah. thought leadership. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Stick to that, yeah. exactly. Right? Yeah. Stick to that, guys. It's really easy, <coughs> we, we, are, we are so busy, right? Find the time, put it in your diary, and today I'm going to write my brand messages. Touch them once a month. If you can write four articles, you've got four months taken care of. Mm -hmm. Done. See you later. You know, Just make sure that on that particular day, there's not in your diary that says, draw down that piece of content, put it into MailChimp, which is free up to 2,000 subscribers, and send it. All right? You will make <coughs> such an amazing service for your customers. It's incredible. But the reason why we use digital right, is that if we put out a brand message, your customers get that and go, oh my God, I can use a bloody dealer. He's amazing, all right, he's awesome, all right? You should really use him, because I know that you said that your spa was broken, okay? It's so powerful. Last question. I love, thank you so much for the presentation. It's really lovely, the quality content. It's awesome, it's inspiring me. I have a question that has come up to me as we've been um, presenting. So at the heart of it, I really I sell relationships, whether at workplace or international or in some form for rich companies and stuff like that. So what would be your advice in regards to everything you presented in that sort of se sector, that niche, I guess? So I think I think where you where you have a massive opportunity is through the work that you've already done. Yeah, the work that you've already done, because I think because I think that potentially in your space, that type of conversation is not, it's becoming better, but it's not yet mainstream. Would that be true? Yeah, yeah. Right, it's yeah. emerging. Yeah, it's, it's got a lot of shame tied around it. Totally. So it's not like we need to fix our light bulb. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, I just need to fix my light bulb. I think in your space, it's a lot more challenging because we've got to firstly overcome this, this shame or the stigma. <laughs> Do, do, I have it? do I have this? And, and like, who do I really talk to? Do, do you know what I mean? And I, I think that's a real problem. However, in saying that, I think that the hard work that you've done right now in terms of working on your customers and so forth, that's a really, really strong place for you to start. But 
when I talk a lot about your target market, you don't narrow down your market, okay? I think in your field, in your given field, it's definitely not broad market. It's about trying to find those really key areas where people are feeling safe, you know what I mean? And that's a very, very strong sales channel that we do, you know what I mean? So, I must, I must answer the last question. Yes, I can. Yeah, this is me on the thought leadership, what exactly in my opinion. In my opinion. That makes the right. Yeah, that's, that's what I believe. So that, I was thinking that when I do presentations and stuff, I'm like, in clinical trials. Okay. 100%. In my opinion, I believe that what the government said about the blah, 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 all right, I agree with, or I disagree with, all right? But that's thought leadership, yeah? You just have to be very, very comfortable, all right? Because people do tend to hide behind the keyboard a little bit, right? If you're controversial, you need to be aware that they might be challenging you, right? That's a great opportunity because then you get to talk again, yeah? And then you keep you keep backing that down. All right, so hopefully that has helped. So young Jim has a reflection. Uh, no, I just want to uh, com compliment you on the quality of your presentation. Thank yes. you very much. I get a lot of people, just let's talk about estate planning. It's not all that we do, but it's it's a great anchor for, for uh, obtaining clients and it's always sort of in the back of people's mind. So I get a lot of people ring up and say, all the new, all the new business comes to our firm, comes to me, I talk to the clients. And this is a typical conversation. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilson, thanks for taking the call. Um, I want to get a quote on doing a will. Oh, okay, well, where did you hear about us from? Thanks for calling me, Jim. Where did you hear about us from, or Jack? Oh, well, Google, or somebody recommended you. And I say, well, um, and I just put a, sow a seed of doubt in their mind. Uh, I say, well, asking me to give you a quote about a will is like asking an electrician to come out and say you want to fix your electrical switchboard uh, before he actually comes out and has a look at it, uh, for which he'll charge you and then he'll give you a quote. In our case, we give you 40 minutes at no cost to come in and talk to us. Can I just ask you a few questions though? Um, are you going to be selling your house in the, in the near future or buying a property? Oh, well, it might be. Are you in business? Uh, yeah, well, we're thinking of actually buying another business as well. Well, these are all things that are very, very relevant to you when you come in to see me for that 40 minute, uh, no, no obligation, no cost discussion. They're very relevant to how we construct your will and they'll be very relevant to, our, uh, to the outcome of your will and the reviews of your will. And by the way, you might choose to use us for those extra services. So we might be able to give you a budget for all of that so that you know going forward what it's gonna be costing you in legal services. Because a lot of these times they're just once only fees. So how do you feel about coming in to talk to us about that? Oh, well, what's, what's the, look, I can say to you that the range is between $450 and $1,500 or $2,000, depending on whether you want to have trusts or not, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I think I'd like to come and have a chat to you. 100% success with that, 100% success. And the trouble is I don't get enough of them. We all don't get enough, but 100% success by exploratory, just trying to help give people context about their lives and what they want, because what they think they want is not always what they want. If you can, yeah. from your experience, give them that, and then what you have to do is convert them when they come in, 100% success. That is a classic example of a building report. Building report, yeah. yeah. Classic example. And, and, and people really know, appreciate that. Yeah. And, they, and they, they, they really do. They appreciate yeah. it. So if you can wrap it. Because they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. Well. We kind of wrap rapport up with credibility, right? Wrap rapport up with credibility. I don't know, you and I are going to be working on that email that we talked about yesterday. But that, that's, a, that's a great opportunity really for everybody. So the, the key take out here, guys, Let's cut quick, quickly those four points again, right? When you meet somebody, you build rapport, right? You explore needs, you present benefits, manage objections, and you close. Ask for So many, So many people honestly get to that point while managing an objection. Oh, see you next week. Sales gone? <laughs> Ask for it. So you're ready to move now, okay? I think once you've done it, once you've done it once or two times, right, and you get the confidence of asking for the sale, don't be frightened. Especially if they reached out to you, you call me. So I'm going to help you. So let's close. <laughs> anyway, thanks, guys.